Hello, welcome for our science lesson. Uh, we are today looking at volcanicity and earthquake. Uh, in the previous lessons, we were looking at the plate tectonic. And uh, we learned that plate tectonic generates some movements of the earth. And those movements, some of them have uh, some effects that we can feel all over the world in some regions. And one of the effects that we are able to find out is volcanicity. And then another effect we learn is earthquake. Then what is volcanicity anyway? We have to be able to understand between the processes that are involved here. Volcanicity is a process by which solid materials and gaseous materials are ejected from the earth surface onto the earth surface that is uh, either can be beneath the earth crust or onto the earth surface and the volcanic materials we had mentioned earlier uh, the volcanic materials include the ash we also have the pyroclasts, uh, pyroclasts, and then um, we also have uh, some gaseous, some gaseous materials that are ejected from beneath the earth crust onto the atmosphere. Some of them may reach into the atmosphere, such as ash, the pyroclastic materials and the gaseous and some of the materials in form of lava they cool and solidifies beneath the bloody uh, the bedding planes therefore uh, we are going to look into the various uh, activities that are carried out in this topic first of all we'll be looking at um, I'll remind us on magma Uh, and also lava. What is magma and what is lava? Will you be able to differentiate between the lava and magma? Uh, magma is the molten materials originating from the interior of the earth and it is still below the surface of the earth. While lava is the molten materials that originates from the interior of the earth's surface and it has reached the surface of the earth. For example, let us uh, illustrate this one using this diagram here. And then we'll be able to look at it. Uh, volcanic activity takes place um, in various places of the earth and where there are some build up of magma and then through the fissures we'll have the magma chamber around here this refers to as magma chamber the chamber of the magma and then it is passing through a small pipe that is known as the vent. Now when these material are being ejected, some of them can be ejected forcefully into the atmosphere in form of gas or the gaseous materials and then some of them can just cool and solidifies between the bedding planes. The materials that are cooled between the bedding planes are the ones that we are looking at its difference. And then some others may flow along the earth surface making different layers.
Now this one is representing what we call the lava. The lava flows. The lava are flowing down the extruded hill. And this one represent magma because it is still between the bedding planes of the earth crust. That's now the difference. Lava has already reached the earth surface and it is flowing. And in the process of flowing, it may cool down, solidify and make some crustal material, uh, especially the lava flows may lead to the formation of the volcanic soils. That is the difference between uh, magma and lava. Now, depending on the degree of uh, viscosity between magma and lava, the degree of the viscosity is the one that determines how far the lava will go and how far the features are going to be resulted here. Now, during the volcanic activity or the volcanic eruption, some materials may come out, uh, out of the ground, such as we have already mentioned gases, materials, the ashes, we have dusts, and other pyroclastic materials. And once the molten materials or the molten uh, rock is ejected out of the earth's surface, we are referring now that one as the lava. And magma may sometime cool and solidify between the bedding planes. We call them the vents or the fissures or some of the cracks on earth crust and then they will lead to the formation of what you call that magma. It is still viscous in its nature. What happens when these both materials, both lava and magma, cools and solidify? Therefore, they are going to give us various types of volcanicity. There are two types of volcanicity. There are two types of volcanicity, and um, they can be classified according uh, to the features that are resulted uh, in the process of volcanic activity. And this one includes, uh, that is we just have to mention, then we shall discuss them in details. One is extrusive. Extrusive volcanicity, and then two, we have intrusive. Intrusive volcanicity. We can classify them. Basing this involves that this involves the features that are formed on the earth surface. The features resulted here are formed on the earth's surface. While intrusive are features that are formed, the result on the features beneath or under the earth crust. They are still in the crust. They have not been exposed outside or they are not exposed into the atmosphere as much. Therefore, we are going to explore features, uh, that is the type of volcanic, we call it extrusive volcanicity. Extrusive volcanicity. Extrusive 
extrusive volcanicity extrusive volcanicity um, is the type of in, uh, uh, volcanicity that involves the processes when the materials of that are involved in the process of volcanic materials they are actually ejected onto the earth's crust and onto the earth's surface and as a result of that during their cooling and solidification of the material the volcanic eruption will result into the formation of extrusive landforms this material will be resulted into extrusive landform and uh, these materials uh, we have already seen them they include um, ash pyroclast and cinder during volcanic materials uh, they are ejected we are looking at them as such as they are ejected on to the earth's surface these materials are ejected onto the earth's surface. That is the major point that we have to understand and consider. Therefore, in the process, it will result to the formation of extrusive landforms. The landforms that are going to be formed here in after, they are referred to as extrusive landforms or features. These features include the volcano, such as volcano. They may also include crater. They may include geysers and also hot springs. These are some few landforms that we may encounter. They are just, they can be easily be seen on the earth's surface. A volcano can be found, craters can be seen, geysers and also hot springs, they can be seen on the earth's surface by our naked eyes. And therefore, we'll be able to look at uh, various types of extrusive volcanicity or not. Uh, we are looking at uh, types of uh, ex uh, volcano, types of volcano. And what is a volcano? There's a difference here between volcanicity and a volcano. A volcano occurs when the eruption through vent results into the materials piling up to the formation and build up a cone-shaped hill. That cone-shaped hill is referred to as volcano. A cone shaped hill. When the ejected materials are erupted, uh, they are expelled into the earth's crust. These materials, uh, they may not go very far. They may just cool and then lead to the formation of a cone-shaped hill. A cone-shaped hill that is referred to as a volcano. This is a cone-shaped hill or a cone-shaped feature that is referred to as a volcano. As a result of the material piling up, around these areas when these materials just pile up uh, they are resulting to the formation of a cone shape feature or a hill 
this hill sometime it may have what you call yeah may have a hollow depression on top of it and then these are the pyroclasts leading to the formation of a volcano and this is the earth surface this represents the earth surface and into the earth surface there is an area where we have a magma chamber where we have magma chamber we will never fail to mention that one because any volcanic eruption begins with the molten state of the materials that comes from the interior of the earth's surface and then they are being ejected forcefully onto the earth's surface or they may remain beneath the earth's surface. That is a volcano uh, due to the highly viscous materials or the intermediate lava um, that may also be a mixture of some minerals content that are found in between the magma will find that they may result into various types of um, volcano and these types we will just mention we will have an active volcano and then we also have a dormant volcano we will have a dormant volcano and then eventually we will also have an extinct we will have extinct volcano there are actually three types of volcanoes if there are many you can add the word es so that we call them volcanoes they are active dormant and extinct the active demand and extinct shortly i will describe about the active and extinct volcanoes and then we will be able to cite various uh, examples in the world an active volcano uh, the volcano that shows have periodically shown the current signs of erupting it can also erupt in the recent feature that means it is very active and that is why we have given it the name an active volcano there are some features on earth surface such as hills that are still experiencing um they are still experiencing the volcanic activity this one shows signs of erupting It shows signs of eruptions. In any time, they may be erupted. They have some signs that are showing. And examples of this active volcano, um, we have Mount Etna in Italy. This one is found in the country called Italy. And then I'll only give two examples. Another one is Pinatubo Mountain in Philippines. This one is found in the Philippines a country that neighbors Australia. These are examples of active volcano. Others are found in Africa continent such as Mount Cameroon and Nyamlagira in Zaire. Cameroon is found in Cameroon country and then Nyamlagira mountain is found in Zaire. Let's look about the dormant volcano. Dormant volcano. Dormant volcano are volcanoes that are not active, but they have some signs of eruption. They are likely to erupt in the near future. 
and uh, some of them are subjected to weathering and erosion and because of that they are wearing down they are wearing down a number of them are found in east african countries we will be able to look at them later and then another feature that may also let's look at the lastly about the extinct before we move on the next uh, extinct volcanoes are those volcanoes that have no any sign of erupting they have no any sign they have no any sign of eruption they have no any sign of eruption just simply they have no sign of eruption that is the best description can give to extinct that is why when something is getting extinct it's almost being forgotten in the geological history of the science now let's move on and look at um, various types of volcanic features that can be resulted into the formation uh, of volcano there are various types of volcanic features i uh, will be able to describe uh, their characteristics and we can also be able to see their shape we can also be able to see their shape one is the lava dome we have the lava dome volcano a lava dome volcano a lava dome volcano is made up of a central volcano with a very wide and a gently sloping cone which is made up of the viscous ma uh, viscous lava that sprayed and flow for a long distance upon its cooling and solidifying it lead to the formation of lava dome or they are also known as the shielded volcano they are also known as the shielded volcano and this one can be found in various regions let's look at how it looks like in terms of the shape how it looks in terms of the shape um, because it is formed uh, from the molten magma that passes through always a small passage or a crack that is known as ve uh, vent or the vent pipe as these materials are ejected on earth surface eh? as they are ejected on earth surface they may flow they may flow and they may flow over a long distance as they flow over a long distance you'll be able to see upon them cooling and they are solidified they will lead to the formation of a lava domed and a shaped feature that appears like this one on earth surface this is a layer of lava that is now flowing during the eruption activity and a number of them may just flow in various pipes or vents and then as they go as they flow they are forming this lava are solidifying this is now magma solidifying beneath the earth's surface some of them can be exposed on earth some of them can be exposed on earth's surface uh, after erosion and then they will lead 
to the formation of a feature that look like this and this one is simply a lava domed shape or it is also referred to as a shielded volcano it looks like this and i will describe this one as a vent pipe and then these one are layers of lava layers of lava then this is magma during the volcanic eruption such feature may be formed as a result of that the lava may spread over a long distance look at this distance it is slightly longer and then as it spread longer, that means the lava was very lighter or more viscous, or less viscous, I mean. And then it spreads over a long distance upon cooling and solidif solidifying on both sides that formed a feature like that, that looks like this one. This is what we call the lava dome. Or it's also referred to as the shielded volcano shielded volcano it is referred to as the shielded volcano and then we also have another one that is called um, another one is referred to as the complex or the stratified the complex or the stratified volcano the composite or the stratified volcano this one is formed as a result of magma it is called complex we can refer to it as complex or the other name is stratified stratified volcano This one is formed when magma builds up from the vent of eruption. When magma built is formed when magma built or when magma is formed around the vent. The name of the vent is the fissure or the crack which makes simple cones after the repeated the repeated one which makes a simple simple cones or a small conlets after the repeated volcanoes after the repeated after the repeated eruption and uh, in the case there has been that is now we are describing about the position of an active volcano it will result into a feature that we look at it as a complex or a stratified volcano and that one you may look at it um, during its formation it may form a uh, it may form a feature on earth surface that will be exposed to various agents of erosion on earth surface that will be able to find it leading to the formation of some some conlet there is a small con that can be built here and then it begins to flow leading to the formation of the same 
and that is after the repeated volcano and then when this material had been be had been piled up to result into a hollow depression that hollow depression is the one that uh, gives it a feature of being stratified it is stratified because some of the materials have been ejected out and they form a small a small conlet around this area also it can be this is a conlet has been formed as a result of that and therefore leading to the formation of a stratified feature when you look at it on earth surface you will be able to find it in various regions uh, this is when it is exposed to erosion on top of it there is a depression and that depression um, we call it crater therefore that is how it may look like it may look like this feature uh, just um, forming in various parts of various regions where there are active volcanic uh, mountains of volcanic features over the earth's surface and uh, most of them they are found in the regions where there are ocean trenches and where there is uh, an effect of plate tectonic and as a result of that they actually uh, they actually lead to the formation of uh, such a feature this is what we call the stratified volcano let's look to the next one that is cinder cone or the yeah it's called the cinder cone <coughs> the cinder cinder cone are also formed is also another feature that occurs in the vent type of eruption where there is emitted materials that consisting of the ash remember the pyroclasts the materials which are very light they are actually sometimes blown by the wind into the atmosphere leading to the formation of a cinder cone in the cinder cone is formed as a result of the the light materials these are just very light materials ejected by a lot of pressure from the vent eruption This is an example of uh, just a hill or a feature on earth's surface. As a result of magma uh, ejecting itself forcefully into the earth's surface, you'll find that this is made up of ash. We also have some gases and some pyroclasts they are found here and then upon the blowing of the wind if the wind blows them they are going to move away from this part and cover the larger atmosphere therefore causing if uh, there are toxic gases they may have an effect into the atmosphere like you remember Mount Pinatubo, once it erupted in Italy around uh, 1985, uh, there was a lot of um, smoke covering the atmosphere and sometimes it led into the blockage of the aircraft from flying as a result until the ash, the gases settled down. And that is how it looks like. It may just be formed in this nature. 
this represent the earth crust while this one is magma uh, in that this is what we call the cinder cone and uh, it's looked like that lastly we will have to look at the at the volcanic plug and then we will move to the volcanic depressions that uh, are formed in the process of volcanic um, volcanic plug is also another feature volcanic plug it's referred to as a volcanic plug sometimes it is also referred to as the spine Uh, this one is formed uh, when lava solidifies within the vent. It is actually formed uh, when lava solidifies within the vent. Solidifies within the vent. It is formed when lava solidifies within the vent. Remember the, the vent is the pipe over which or the fissure which lava may eject through it and later and later exposed uh, and later exposed to erosion it is exposed to erosion agent of erosion uh, you remember we had handled the part of erosion in the other lessons and then when erosion takes place, it will leave behind a resistant, a resistant material that is a hard feature, a hard and resistant, resistant landform that is known as the spine. This one has resisted various agents of um, erosion and therefore it has just stood. Uh, it is just stature in itself into the, uh, on the earth surface and therefore it can easily be seen. It can easily be seen and therefore will be able to look at how it is formed let's look at its shape how it looks like the spine how does the spine look like how does the spine look like This uh, is just uh, a representation of the rocks. It has resisted various uh, agents of erosion. And therefore, it may just stand stiff, exposed in this manner in the earth. This is what we referred to it as a spine. After erosion has taken place, and then you'll find this the spine of lava. And then this one is the volcano itself. This is now the, the lava that had been formed along the vent. You remember the vent is just subjected here. But 
Upon its cooling and solidification, it has led to the formation of a hard resistant rock that also is very much resistant to the agents of erosion when it's exposed in the atmosphere, leading to the formation of a feature such as the spine. And um, that is how it is. Lastly, we'll also have the volcanic depressions and there are various depressions, just a depression, we can call them the crater, and then we'll also be able to look at other features, volcanic depressions. There are two types of depressions that are formed. We should also be able to find one of the depression is known as crater. It's known, it's known as crater. And then uh, another one is known as a caldera. We will also be able to look at them, how a crater is formed. A crater is a simple depression uh, that is uh, a, round, a rounded, fan-shaped, hollow depression at the mouth of the volcanic vent. Is a rounded hollow depression a rounded hollow depression that is found at the mouth of the volcanic at the mouth at the mouth of the volcanic the mouth of the volcanic, or it's not the volcanic, the mouth of a vent during volcanic eruption. This vent is enlarged periodically because it is in the form of a hollow depression. We will have to call it crater. And when these crater are filled with water, sometimes they form what you call a Mars Lake. We will look at them. Mars Lake or Crater Lakes, they are found in various regions of the world. Um, how is it formed? How is a crater formed? A crater is formed when magma extrudes or ejects itself through an opening that is known as the vent, through an opening that is known as the vent, and as a result of that, it may lead into a depression It may lead into a depression that is formed around um, the vent. This depression is what we are talking about. Sometime it may be filled with water in the periodic happening as a result of its formation. This is a depression that is referred to as crater and then the periodic action 
of repeated activity of eruption will lead to the formation of a, a huge basin like depression that is known as a caldera. When caldera are filled with water, uh, we have this one is the second one is called caldera. It is filled with water around the mouth, around the mouth where it is, uh, where there was periodic eruption and that one will result into the formation of this feature. The difference between crater and a caldera is that you'll find that a crater is a, is a, is a, is a, is a small rounded depression while a caldera is enlarged depression over that is formed especially on mountain tops. When you look at some mountain tops where eruption has taken place, for example, the Pinatubo mountain, you'll be able to find uh, the crater and they are formed in various regions. Lastly, let us look at the, the hot springs, geishas, uh, and the steam jet. Because I heard also, we out of this, we are going to look at the various significance of these features on Earth's surface. There is a hot spring. And then we will have a geisha. And steam jet. Can also be formed is a result of that. These are the extrusive features that we had mentioned. Uh, a, geyser is a, uh, a geyser is a mass of water that springs to form fountains. And this water may uh, be expelled out. Uh, it may be expelled out from the fissures onto the surface or into the air column and as a result of that it will lead to a hot spring will have hot springs will be formed we will also have uh, some steam jet and geisha all of them are formed in the similar manner I want to subject them to one diagram or two diagram so that uh, we'll be able to look at them. When the, uh, a small section of the earth surface has been incised, and then there is a crack, that is a crack, and then remember into the crustal layers into the crustal layers there are some benefits of rocks I outlined and the one of the benefit of the crustal rocks is that they lead to the storage of underground water. You have to remember that one. The underground storage of water. This is the underground water has been stored into the crustal layers. And then what happens? When magma around this area is heated up, this water will generate also convectional currents. The water will generate convectional currents again. And as a result, the pressure will be very high. 
the pressure will be very high and therefore what will happen when the pressure becomes high then water as a state of matter will find an escaping place so that they are found jutting out They are found jutting out of the earth crust and in the process they may use a small opening. They may use a small opening as they are expelled out into the earth's atmosphere because when the pressure is built up what will happen it will force some of the gaseous state of the water that is going to be expelled out and then this one is through a small crack or the fissure over which uh, a hot spring hot spring is formed this is a spring of water that is jutting out from the earth surface just naturally from that and then uh, you will find that may result the formation of such and the hot spring and uh, steam jets are the indicators of uh, also the presence of magma underground and uh, that one they are actually very much significant when we look at this we'll be able to understand now in the in the natural state all the features that we have been looking at and uh, formed as a result of volcanicity some of them have some significance uh, they are, have some significance over the earth's surface let us look for example we have been able to find out the these features what are their significance from the natural state you will find that the lava flows the lava flows may lead to the formation to the formation of um, to the formation of uh, rich fertile formation of fertile fertile soils where agricultural activities may be practiced fertile soil that is a place where agriculture may be practiced and also some of the features um, they just create beautiful sceneries they create beautiful sceneries or they create beautiful scenes that attract various people and various culture for the attraction of various various cultural people over the world there are some people will come and gaze at the beauty of that uh, feature that will be formed and eventually let's look at the, some of the um, some of the spring um, can be used to harness hydroelectric power can be used to harness to harness electricity that is very positive and uh, the use of electricity can be used in both domestic and industrial use uh, that means we can tap some energy in the same regions where there are 
springs and steam jet. And this water can also be channeled in various areas uh, when they are uh, piped. And then you will find that uh, they will lead, uh, some of them can be economical. Uh, they have economic significance over the earth's surface and for the sake of the human being. Uh, therefore, we have been able to look at uh, features that uh, have been resulted the formation of extrusive volcanicity. We have only dealt with the extrusive volcanicity and we have been able to look at various features that have been formed such as volcano. But uh, we have uh, looked at the, 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 the lava dome shield, the complex and the stratified volcano. We have us and the shinder cones. We also have the plug dome and lastly, we have been able to look at the steam jets uh, geysers and hot springs. And that is much we have covered today. In the next lesson, we will be, we'll be looking at um, the intrusive features that have been formed as a result of volcanicity. Then we'll be moving to the earthquakes. Thank you.